it's Russ from the Infectious Groove vinyl channel and podcast. Coming up today, I'm going to talk about two pieces of rare vinyl that also shaped who I am as a music listener. I'm going to talk about some classic hip hop history from Ice T and Third Bass coming right up. So when I was a kid, the first real exposure that I got to rap music was through Run DMC's Raisin Hell. And then really expanded out into everything that was going on at that time. LL Cool J, the Beastie Boys, Cool Modi, so on and so forth. And, and even back further before Run DMC was even really pioneering it, I, after I got into them, I went back and looked into some other stuff that had come out before them out of the same area. And then uh, really there was a big shift out of everything out of LA uh, with NWA leading the forefront of that, um, Public Enemy and so on. And things got really heavy as far as the messaging that was coming out of uh, what was considered at the time rap, gangster rap, um, hip hop were all kind of lumped into one. And for my age, the messaging was like a little bit heavy, you know, being in my uh, mid teens at the time. Uh, I liked a lot of what I had heard from Run DMC and LL Cool J and everybody I'd mentioned before um, and the serious things that they were talking about. But I also liked uh, that there were skits on some of the records or some silly moments or things that could at least for my age at the time keep me uh, involved in the record uh, when I really wasn't ready for some big, big topics just yet. So how... I evolved as far as those things is I didn't so much skip over uh, NWA and Public Enemy and whatnot, but I really only heard about them on MTV um, and knew, I don't want to say radio hits, but I, I knew the tracks that were getting attention and I really didn't dig into those full records until quite a bit later. However, there were two albums that came out almost back to back in 1991 that really, really, really helped shape uh, who I was as a person as far as uh, what I wanted to find on my next path down rap. One of them was this one here, Ice-T's Original Gangster, which came out May 14th, 1991. And the original pressing of this is pretty rare. Uh, this was reissued by Music on Vinyl, a label that I love. I have a, quite a few reissues from Music on Vinyl that I have little to no complaints with. And really the issue that I have with their reissue of this record goes back to the original pressing, but I'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, as far as the record goes, absolutely fantastic record. Uh, if I have a complaint with the vinyl pressing, uh, all vinyl pressings that I'm aware of, it's that this is on a single LP, no matter what way you get it, including the Music on Vinyl reissue uh, that came out, I want to say two or three years ago, is the shooting of this video. And when I first got this LP, I don't know why, but I just assumed that it was going to be on two LPs. This was kind of in my early days of ordering vinyl from uh, Discogs and uh, outside of the U.S. and not really having any idea, you know, what to expect or not knowing to look into the track listings and so on. So when it arrived, I was like, wait a minute, this is only on one LP. How is that? Because the record's long enough to facilitate two. And then I found out how they did that was they cut off, unfortunately, my favorite track on the record, which is a song called Midnight. And it just is gone from the album. The track listing goes all the way up to where the song would be. Then it skips right over it. Now, you still do get uh, New Jack Hustler, Original Gangster, uh, Body Count, which many people think of the band Body Count that Ice-T was involved with, with the... A uh, very famous song that came out on the record after this, but a lot of people don't know that the first song by Body Count is actually on this record, Original Gangster, and uh, not at all a rap song. If you've ever heard the band Body Count, the song Body Count that's on here sounds exactly like what you're expecting them to sound like. Uh, but that was another draw to the record, too, because it was before all the controversy that would happen with their self-titled debut album that came out after this. Um, I just like the song that I heard on here in the first place. Uh, but having said that, you do get everything on the record except for my personal favorite track, which is uh, Midnight. So I chose to skip over the Music on Vinyl reissue of this because when 
music on vinyl does reissues they usually do include extra tracks if they were left off or they'll take an lp that was one lp and spread it over two like it should have been in the first place and for whatever reason this album didn't get that treatment again that's not a knock on the company music on vinyl i love a lot of what they do um this track could only matter to me for all i know uh this could just be a thing that only i care about maybe some folks looking at this uh video are like yeah but i who cares i don't even you know, I don't even care about the song Midnight, so could just be me, and that's cool if so. But for me, I love that song, and I was really bummed out that it wasn't on the original or on the one reissue that's happened since. Um, I don't know if this record is a big enough deal to get the attention of the record labels to reissue. Uh, perhaps the biggest single off of here is the song New Jack Hustler, which was uh, featured in and on the soundtrack for the movie New Jack City. So. If I'm a record label, I might just go and reissue that soundtrack uh, as opposed to putting time and energy into this record where the same big hit appears. But outside of the one thing that's missing, the one track, fantastic sounding pressing, uh, very, very average for the early 90s, uh, thin, probably 120, 140 gram records, uh, but really quiet uh, on the Sire label, and then uh, printed inners on the inside with all the lyrics, which are a huge thing for someone like myself, a rap fan at the time. Uh, you really, really want to dig into the lyrics and what's happening uh, with the artist. So, and like I say, for an album called Original Gangster, uh, there was a lot of serious, there was a lot of social issues and whatnot on this, but it was more similar to me, uh, to the Run DMC, LL Cool J type thing that I was used to, where it did handle some serious issues, but also... Uh, there's a lot of skits on there and keeps things light and whatnot. And again, I can still appreciate that stuff now that I can appreciate the social stuff even more. But back then, it helped balance the record a little bit more for me. The one that came out only a couple of weeks later, this came out in mid-June 1991, is the second and unfortunately uh, last record by Third Base. Freaking fantastic uh, hip hop duo or trio rap trio and I was really 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 digging on their first record a lot I was hoping for great things from the second record I think this is a fantastic second record and then out of nowhere they disbanded and this is all that we got and to my knowledge this one has never been reissued on vinyl uh, which is a crime I had to import this again off of Discogs outside of the US uh, but I got a real good one that uh, is very quiet and has all of the tracks because it is spread out over four sides, so you're not missing any of the tracks. Now with this record, there's not a lot of uh, social injustice and politic talk on it. There is some here and again, but uh, they kind of were going about this record with the idea of being... Um, the guardians of, of hip-hop and keeping the culture together and the big lead single off of this that was a huge hit at the time was uh, Pop Goes the Weasel which if you've ever heard the song was just an open and direct attack on Vanilla Ice and uh, his use of samples and appropriation of uh, the black and hip-hop culture and how third bass felt that it could have been done quite a bit better and What's interesting about that is the track has lyrics about how uh, Vanilla Ice stole under pressure to make uh, Ice Ice Baby and what a crime that type of thing is. And then the track Pop Goes the Weasel itself is heavily, heavily reliant on a sample of uh, Sledgehammer by Peter Gabriel. So a little bit of irony there, but it's a it's an awesome sample and a, and a really, really, really good use of the hook in the track underneath all those great uh, rhyme schemes. And in the, in the record itself, this is really heavy on the skits. Um, nearly every other track is some form of uh, skit or um, joking type track. But again, for me, I think it holds up. When I throw this record on, I, I kind of miss that uh, lately. I think really maybe in the last 10 years or so that's kind of gone away out of rap and hip-hop and uh this is back when it was certainly in its prime uh where a lot of rap and hip-hop records had those big huge um 
skits every couple of tracks or even silly tracks that were more like inside jokes than anything that were on the record but then became part of culture so that is a little bit on these two pressings uh this has been reissued but to be honest uh other than maybe 180 gram re uh, record in the reissue you're not really getting a lot out of it uh, that you wouldn't if you didn't track down an original and then as far as the third base record goes to my knowledge this has never been reissued I would love to see it get included in a Respect the Classics or a Def Jam anniversary or, or something. I, I think this this band should have got a lot more credit than they got. Uh, and I certainly would have loved to have seen them be around for a lot more than two albums. So that is a bit of a rundown from us today. If this is your first time on the channel, hopefully this is the video that made you go, yep, today's the day I subscribe. And I would love it if you would hit the subscribe button on the channel. If you've already been here and you haven't hit that like button yet on this video, please do so now would greatly appreciate every like and subscription and share of course helps the channel a great deal but also i love reading the comments and if you learn something in this video or if you have questions or if there's something you know about these albums that i don't would love to hear from you so make sure you leave a comment below most of all thanks for watching